gotta get this little this little mic on. It's my first video, believe it or not. It's my first video. Okay, all right. We're mic'd up. We're double cheeked up. Let's get into it. First YouTube video. It's a it's a camera review. I can't wait. Um, where were we? Oh yes. Oh yes, that's right. Coffee. Coffee. There's nothing like a coffee on on a nice morning, a weekday morning. Except it's not the morning whatsoever. It's the fucking afternoon. I hope that doesn't give you too much insight into my life. Granted, I am still a student. All right. Anyways, let's get into it. So today what we're doing is we're actually reviewing the Olympus AF10 quartz date. Get a nice, get a nice zoom in, nice autofocus on that. Did it get it? I'm gonna trust that it got it. <clears throat> okay, so basically, um, I have to talk to you about this guy. Uh, really, I didn't, I didn't really set out too much of a challenge for myself for the first video um, because I basically I chose a camera that, first of all, the back paneling I got it mint condition. The back panel, uh, the back paneling, bleh, the back paneling doesn't even work. So that's the funny thing, like that you get with these point shoots when they have the ribbon wire leading from the battery to the LCD screen. Um, it doesn't even work. So, so what we're going to be reviewing is everything but the back panel. That being said, there is a lot of great things about this camera. Um, most of which has to do with the lens and that's, that's really it. Um, at the end of the day, it's a point and shoot. Um, really, the reason most people buy Olympus point and shoots is because the glass is really good for, for the price. And that holds true with this guy as well. So how about we just go into like, how about we go to the photo walk? and I'll kind of just talk to you while we're going and sort of point out the major problems and the major pros and you can kind of just like see for yourself what the issues are and see how everything jams and basically we'll go over the camera together and we'll stop watching me talk. How does that sound? Is that kosher? So one of the problems I have with the Olympus is first and foremost, and I'm gonna talk about the problems first, because uh, it's something you need to be wary of. The little slidey thing, the, the slider that covers the lens, once you open that, I mean, that's a popular feature for all the Olympus point shoots, is there's no real, um, there's no nothing really stopping you from covering the lens with one of your fingers. And so you're gonna see in these photos right here, uh, that that was a big problem for me, especially um, first impression. I had to learn to not cover the lens with my middle finger while taking a shot because you will not see it in the rangefinder um, or the viewfinder really. It's just, it, it's just something <laughs> that you gotta watch out for because I had awesome photos, uh, the ones you're seeing right now and they didn't come out so well because there's a fucking fingertip covering uh, part of the photo. Second of all is you, you can't really see it and I'm not gonna go out of my way to show you, but you're gonna have to trust me when I say this is that the viewfinder itself has this weird kind of, so like you're looking through the viewfinder and you see the, the rectangle of, of what you're taking the picture and then inside that rectangle is another sort of like opaque rectangle which you're supposed to see as kind of the boundaries for where you're taking the photo and that's a little bit problematic because half the time I'm using the camera I can't actually see it so I'm when I aim at the photo and I'm taking the shot usually I have to like aim at something else so that I can get a different scenery a different amount of light going through the viewfinder so I can see where the edges are and then be like oh okay that's where the edges are now I have to aim it back to the subject I was going to shoot and it's kind of, you know, sometimes if it's a time worthy, you know, if it's something you're trying to take and it's, it's like an in the moment kind of thing, it kind of sucks. So that's basically something you're going to have to get used to, um, which if you're shooting with this camera, it's got a phenomenal lens, you're going to get used to it anyways. So those are really the only bad things 
about the camera, apart from the fact that this back screen doesn't work, which it doesn't really matter because it's just like minor exposure compensation. And I mean, the flash is auto anyways, you're not gonna be turning the flash off, which is, you know, that's the only thing I'd ever use a back panel for on a point and shoot, especially one as cheap as this, it was only like a hundred bucks, um, mint condition. But it's not mint because the back panel doesn't work. Anyways, continuing on, the lens is phenomenal and the auto metering is also really great. So at the end of the day, um, you're buying this Olympus because it's an Olympus. So as you can see in these photos, they came out extremely sharp. Um, of course, I shot these on Portra 400. Um, you know, the trusty Portra 400 had a nice little morning walk. It's interesting when you're making a video is you take the photos and you, you scan them and you see them in person and you're like, huh, these are kind of just ordinary, you know? But when you add the video reel to give the photos context, that's when they really come out. You look at them on video and you go, huh, I wonder what the photo's gonna look like. And then bam, you get the, you get the 35 millimeter capture in film in real time, juxtaposed to the wide angle footage of the scene that you were gonna take the photo of. And I think that's what's really magical. And that's what they don't tell you. Um, when they're when they're making videos is that if you are taking photos of random stuff in a neighborhood like I am at 7 a.m. and you don't um, you don't compare those photos to the contextual footage, you're kind of going to be disappointed. You know, that's that's how you can get away with taking really basic bad photos that are just, you know, bordering pleasant is you got to give them that footage context. Anyways, I'm mumbling on um, another thing that I really liked about the camera is the fact that it's extremely sturdy. I'm gonna take a break here and just kind of show you that this guy is is a brick. This dude is not, it's not getting damaged if you drop it. I'm not worried about this whatsoever. It's a solid, just nice sturdy brick. And this shutter or this, this lever mechanism is absolutely, it is just so in there, you know what I mean? It's not flimsy, like if you've ever used um, an Olympus Stylus Zoom or the Mu1 or Mu2, there's kind of a kind of a flimsy sort of lightweight, not exactly on the tracks, kind of feels like you could slide it open too hard. Yeah, so there's not much else to add. Um, of course, going over the specs, it does have a really nice flash. The lens itself is, it's an Olympus lens. I, I'm not sure if it's a Zuiko or not, because normally the Olympus lens are a Zuiko. Um, but it is a 35 millimeter 3.5. So that could explain why the images are so sharp. Of course, if it were a 2.8, it would be more expensive and more of a luxury point and shoot, even though like no point and shoots are luxury, especially when they first came out. All in all, um, you've got a pretty good camera. Uh, it's a brick, it meters really well, and the lens is really sharp. So you can't really go wrong for the price, especially when mint. I got it for $100 on eBay, and of course you can get it from other places for a lot less. I know some guy in England got like a brand new one of these at a Goodwill or some thrift store for like three pounds, 50 pence, which is absolutely nothing, it's like eight bucks. So if you can get your hands on one of these guys, I would absolutely go for it. They're so much fun, they're so sturdy. You've got a really solid lens, and really it's, it's a no-brainer, you know, if you especially if you're just getting into film like this is this is one of the guys I would carry around with me and If nothing else, I think that's the end of the video. I think we're I think we're done here So I'm gonna bid you guys an adieu. I would say like and you know smash that like button or whatnot But you know, I, I'm sure I've got other content coming out. So if you like it Yeah, whatever, All right, you know Goodbye.